Um, welcome everyone. I'm Angela Hughes. I'm co-chair of PRCA Scotland. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon for the first in a new series called The Secret of My Success. Um, and this is very much aimed at um, bringing, um, bringing in some of our PR industry veterans, people that have got sort of decades of experience and giving you an opportunity to learn from their experience um, and some tips and advice. So Graham Jack is our guest today. He's first up, bit of, bit of a guinea pig for this for, for this new format and event. Thanks um, Graham much. is- Being the guinea pig. What, yes, <laughs> in a good way, in a good yeah. way. Um, so Graham is UK comms director for Muller, which probably most people will know um, they um, sell yogurts and probably other dairy products as well, I suspect. Um, Graham, you can tell us. Um, I was also interested to find when I first met Graham um, that they actually own Eddie Stobart as well, which kind of makes sense given they're a, a dairy business, but um, that was a little nugget of information that I didn't know. Um, so we're going to spend the next sort of 50 minutes or so um, having a chat with Graham, just doing a bit of an informal chat style to find out a bit more about Graham's career. Um, how he found his footing in the industry, how he learned, highs and lows, um, and then we'll wrap up with some advice and tips. So if you have any questions at all, put them into the chat. Um, I'll put them to Graham. Um, so good opportunity to, to find out from someone that's got the benefit of decades of experience around how to get ahead in the industry. Um, so Graham, maybe just kick off by giving us a little bit of a a synopsis of your your CV, sort of where you started, various moves you've made. So, um, I'll hand over to you to, sure. to kick off. Sure. Well, first of all, hello everybody, and thank you for um, spending your lunch hour doing this. Um, please don't don't feel you can't have your lunch uh, whilst whilst you're listening to us. Um, but uh, yeah, nice nice to meet you all um, through the the medium of Zoom. Um, my background is I'm from a farming background in Aberdeenshire, um, remote, um, rural, didn't really have many people to talk to in my formative years. Um, I, I, I was kind of always attracted to the idea, though, that you can, uh, you can change things um, through communication, but more importantly, through understanding people and, and their behaviours. And that was kind of... Um, uh, fascination in people and their behaviours was, I suppose, my route into this into this industry. Um, my first job was, I think, like many people, my first job was in the public sector. I was with a local council in um, in, in Aberdeenshire. Um, I was mentored by a close to retirement, time served um, journalist, uh, ex Daily Express. And Scotsman, uh, his name was Ian Rennie, and he's in his 90s now, um, and we still keep in touch. And he was very gruff and uh, also kind, um, tolerant. Um, and I suppose he taught me how to how to listen um, to people, how to not jump in, be reflective um, rather than impulsive. And that was really formative for me. Um, uh, and that was my my first job, first three or four years, and it was it, it, it was really formative. Um, thereafter, my career was split into two parts. Um, first part was consultancy, um, and the second part was in house uh, consultancy. Initially in Aberdeen with what became uh, Weber Shandwick, um, and my first experience there of consultancy was very old school um, management. Uh, it was a very uh, the city itself was and still is dominated by oil and gas, very testosterone filled uh, uh, industry and, and uh, uh, office working environment. Um, but, and obviously in consultancy, you know, you need to win business and you need to uh, uh, you power your consultancy with, with clients. So um, I, I, I really got quite interested in winning new business. I started to develop a conference and, an approach there, and I got the opportunity to move to Glasgow um, to run Shandwick's office there, uh, and I did that for a number of years. Um, 
there and we, we, we built really quite a substantial um, business in Glasgow and Edinburgh and Aberdeen uh, with Shandwick. I then got um, the opportunity to build a new agency from scratch with some ex Shandwick colleagues and we did that um, for three or four years uh, and that business was then sold to the parent of Grayling and it's now part of, part of Grayling, um, which you'll be familiar with. And I suppose the common den denominator for me throughout that period was that I advised Robert Wiseman Dairies, the, the, uh, the, the, the Scottish um, and UK dairy company. And I advised them really right from their listing on the stock exchange in 1994, um, right, right through the, the, their build process from North Provincial dairy in west coast of Scotland to being the biggest fresh milk business in 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 Britain, north to south. Um, so uh, Wiseman uh, was a disruptor in a very traditional uh, industry, and when they got too big to be advised by a a consultant without any comms in house at all, they asked me to come in house, and I did that. Um, uh, Wiseman was, after they completed their build process, was acquired by Muller, and I got the opportunity to become comms director at Muller, um, not just in the UK, but, you know, for three years, I was group um, comms director for Muller, uh, who are in 10 countries, 30,000 employees. Um, so I'm now uh, kind of in at the current time, um, I, I, I still work with with Moore. I'm spending less time within Moore, and uh, uh, the team here is now run by a, a, a very good uh, head of comms, Jack Gorman, who I work with uh, closely, and an excellent team here. And I divide my time between Moore, and I, I, I now chair a, a charitable trust um, called Athletics Trust Scotland, which uh, aims to transform lives through uh, running and athletics. I also chair a local running club and I'm a licensed uh, um, uh, UK athletics licensed running coach as well. So um, I, I kind of hybrid now. I, I, I work part of my week with Muller and the other part with the other bits and pieces. So that, that's, that's, that's my 35 years in, in five minutes. Great, thank you. It sounds like you've packed a lot in, um, you know, a real mix there between consultancy and in-house. And I want to come back to that because I think people might be interested in, you know, making the switch between the two and the different experiences. But I guess going back to the early start of your career, you sort of mentioned um, starting off in a local authority, <clears throat> um, being sort of taught and mentored by an ex-journalist, which we see quite a lot of that, I guess, across mm -hmm the PR industry. So tell us a bit more about what you recall from those early days of, of learning what comms it is and how you were finding your feet and, you know, working with a sort of, as you said, a, a gruff but kind journalist, mm -hmm. ex-journalist, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I suppose what that, what your question speaks to is the importance of mentoring and um, it, is a, it is a point that I wanted to make to everybody um, he, here today, and that is to, um, to find people that um, align with your values and, and um, that you instinctively admire and to let them know and, 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 and to ask for their help. Um, I suppose my experience for what it is, is that nobody minds offering their, their, their help, particularly to people who are, who, who are starting out. And um, whether it was, it wasn't by design, but looking back now, I think one of the most important um, elements of my uh, career and, 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 and any, any progress that I've made in my career is just doing that and feeling feeling okay about um, saying to people who certainly with it, in my consultancy life I was probably advising them and I was getting more out of them than they ever got out of me, um, and being open enough to say to them, look, I, I'm really interested in how you did that, um, and and I'm really interested in why you're doing this, 
or what 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 your inspirations are or how your business works and so on um and and uh, um being i suppose just playing the card of being a kind of youthful naive um idiot um sometimes doesn't doesn't harm and um uh, you know, I, I, I like to think I still do that, you know, the, the, the people that I'm meeting now and the athletic stuff that I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm being quite open and saying, I've, I've really admire what you've done. And, 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 you know, can you tell me about that? And uh, I suppose throughout my career, there's been lots of examples of that. And I found myself in really quite bizarre situations just because of just just by showing a bit of enthusiasm, you know, working for a key example would be. I remember getting the chance to work for Matthew Algae, the coffee company, and to pitch for their business. And the chief exec at that time was similar age to me, and uh, it's a multi-generational family business. And I could see the passion that he had for his business. And so I said to him, you know, what, so what is it that, you know, what is it that drives you? And he said, I just love the coffee. I love the smell of the coffee and the taste of the coffee. Um, so I said, well, can I can it come in and um, just spend some time in in the business and learn how it's made? He said, yeah, 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 come in. So I spent, um, I think it was a week um, in Matthew Algae and I got to go around all the parts of the business to see the coffee roaster and to see how they, how they pack it and um, seeing how the coffee is made. And so, so of course that helped my knowledge of the business but also convinced him that I was somebody that had a, a real desire to help him. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think that's a really important um, sort of, I, I don't think that changes over the years. You know, I think it's really important. Yeah, I think that probably goes back to what you said about your first mentor, Ian Rennie. He taught you the importance of, le of listening Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I guess that feeds into that whole learning process and immersing yourself in mm -hmm. a client's business and showing that you're enthusiastic and passionate about what they're passionate about. And, and in turn, that helps you do your job better as a communicator. Mm -hmm. I, and I think also, um, and this is, the, the, this is hard, particularly in the first few years, but also having the confidence to say, um, I, I don't really know, I don't really understand your business. You know, I, I don't, you know, teach me about uh, uh, about your business. And um, I know a little bit about comms and PR, um, but what would really help me is to is to understand. And, uh, um, you know, if you can do that and get a side benefit of building the relationship with the with the, uh, uh, the, the potential client or with the, the if you're in the house with your leadership team, then then fantastic. I, I can't see any downside to doing that. You yeah, just need to take the brave pill and say, the brave pills and say, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You know. I think that's, that's a really, I think that's a really good point. It's a really, it's a really good piece of advice as well for everyone. You know, you've, you've hit on the nail there that, you know, people don't really want to expose themselves as not knowing something, yeah. but actually, you know, being confident and enough to say, actually I don't understand this can you can you teach me um is is actually uh, uh, is really beneficial mm -hmm. yeah I think particularly as a consultant I remember thinking when I first started my consultancy career when I was going into a client's business thinking Christ I'm a consultant I should be knowing I should know everything I should know the uh, all, all, all of the answers they're paying me to know all, all, all of the answers and feeling really quite stressed by that, you know, and uh, I think it's actually okay to say that you don't, you don't know all the answers. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, just something as well about your early part of your career, Graham, and this is, I think this is something that's probably developed um, over the, over the years and possibly um, when you started out, universities and colleges weren't offering sort of PR and comms related degrees and that we've seen that change quite a lot and more recently we're seeing social media type qualifications etc did you come to the industry with with any qualifications on that level and 
And did you do you feel that you know is that important? Does that matter? What what was your experience on that side of things? Um, well, so I was a disaster at school, um, to be honest. Uh, I I wasn't you know I did I didn't leave school with great um, qualifications um, at all, and you know there's no way that I could get to university with 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 what I I think I managed to get a C in English. So, you know, that was probably at the top of my list. Um, so anyway, I, you know, it wasn't really an option for me to go to, to university. So I, I, I did go to college and I did a basic business um, uh, diploma or certificate or something of that kind. And then I, I did a, a comms um, diploma. Um, I, I, I think to be honest, the real value in learning came to me via organizations like PRCA um, when, I, when I started out my consultancy uh, career, getting involved in getting involved in anything that brought me into contact with other young professionals was just really, really beneficial. And uh, um, uh, you, you, I probably didn't realize that at the time, but looking back, it, it, it really was. The most important thing as a younger professional that you can build is confidence, in my, in, in, in my opinion. And anything that uh, helps you do that, you grab with, with both hands. And uh, um, networking is, is probably the most important thing. Just, just being able to talk about your, the situations that you're in um, with other with other people, I think made an enormous difference to me. That plus um, just a little bit of smart smart mentoring of the kind that I, you know I described uh, earlier. Yeah, I think. absolutely. I mean, we see you know there's the, the the campaign annual campaign by I think Skills Development Scotland about you know no wrong path. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we see lots of people talking about the various um, routes that they took into their career and. What we often say in my role to, to people coming for interview is that you know we can teach you the ropes, we can teach you what you need to know to do the job, but what's important is your attitude and your approach mm -hmm. to learning and demonstrating that you're willing to learn and that you're that you develop confidence and a bit of initiative mm -hmm. as well around what you're doing. Okay, um, well, I guess let's move on a little bit from the sort of entry level of, of your career. Um, and and let's have a conversation. You've obviously talked about you know you've you've worked in agency and you've worked in consultancy. You've you've named a few sort of household names that we would all recognise, like Muller, Matthew Algae, that type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, what what would you say are your um, looking back? You know what what are the sort of career highlights that you've got? What best pieces of work or or pieces of work that you're most proud of? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 that's quite a difficult question because it's it's uh, you know it's a long three decades of of of, of work and um, I suppose I've got a very um, I've got a very, a very harsh filter in that I do one thing and then just move on to the next and if you if you ask me what I did six months ago I probably couldn't couldn't tell you. Um, because I can't, I just, you know, for me, it's a waste of brain space to retain all of that stuff. But I suppose that, you know, a, a good recent example, what I really like is going into change situation. And because I think change situations give you the opportunity to really show what you can be fortunate to have a fantastic team um, uh, here, here, here at Muller. Um, and, and I would say that my colleagues have helped um, to minimise mistakes um, over the years by just taking a kind of collegiate approach. And, and again, this is back, back to something we discussed there earlier on. For me as a, as a leader, it's very important that um, my team and also the business here know that I don't have all the answers. Um, and as an individual, um, I might have, I might bring lots of experience but without their input and their involvement and their intellectual capability, um, the mistake, the, 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 the potential for mistakes is much higher. That's not to say I haven't made lots of mistakes because I have. Um, 
uh, I was thinking about this in advance. Good one was, and I think I was left on my own uh, here to do this. I remember a challenging situation for Coca-Cola, uh, which we handled, um, handled Coca-Cola's business in the UK. And uh, I think, well, no, I don't I was responsible for sending the holidays are coming truck um, to the home of a notorious drug dealer in Glasgow who had won a competition to have that visit uh, his house. And then being in the position where I had to defend that on behalf of Coca-Cola to the record and the sun, um, which, which was quite challenging. Um, yeah, how did you do that? What line did you answer that? <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. I think I just held my hands and said, Yo, believe me, I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, it was, um, I can't remember what the defence for that was. But anyway, that's what I did. Um, but but uh, yeah, most of the time you can avoid, you can avoid, the, the mitigation is always the team. And, um, uh, you know, m my team probably don't, don't kind of realise this, but, I have the highest regard for what they bring. And uh, I think it's also really important to say that that's the, the team is kind of multi-generational. So there are people of all ages. And I what I find uh, is that the younger members of the team very often have the most valuable input. Mm -hmm. um, they, 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 they bring a, a, a kind of freshness that, that is really, really valuable. And I, I suppose another message for people on this call is, don't underestimate your own value um, in, 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 and your instinct, um, because your instinct is likely to be right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's quite a lot of what we do in PR and comms is a judgment call. Mm -hmm. um, and quite often there's there's no right answer. There are shades of grey and there are, you know, there are pros and cons and varying levels of risk in terms of how you approach something um, and I think also you know <clears throat> people talk about making mistakes and people have a fear of making mistakes and of failing um, and you know you wouldn't want to promote it but you know making mistakes can also be a really good learning list a, a, a valuable learning um, approach that you know you can look back and say well you know I, I won't do it that way the next time or I won't do I won't do that again and we actually recently in our agency we did have a conversation where we we sort of had an open conversation with the whole team including the junior members about you know some of the mistakes that the 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 more senior people had made in their careers to sort of you know encourage people to think about you know well you can learn from that process but also um, if you do make a mistake or you get something wrong you know always put your hand up because we can fix it there's always a solution yeah, I, 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 I agree. And I, I suppose that that trips into another um, point, which is really, really core to me. And I now understand it. I, I probably didn't understand it at the start of my career, but I've now kind of boxed it up and I think I know what it is. And that is that I think as in this industry, there is sometimes a temptation to be short termist and to try and come up with a quick fix or uh, just to do do what needs to be done on the day um, uh, uh, and so on. But a long and 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 uh, or, or a, a, a career that's enjoyable and is also uh, rewarding is built on values, and I think integrity is the most important of of all. You need to you need to stand for something, you, you, you know, and you need to become known in your business or your consultancy for being that person, for, for being somebody that that is trusted, um, that 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 will listen, and listen hard, um, and will will uh, and due to the integrity element is able to take on information, um, without fear. Uh, and 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 to 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 have that integrity, I think is just massively important. And you know, you see, in a room uh, when you're in a meeting, there'll be different characters. Always the case. My best advice is avoid the loudest. 
um, you know, and and uh, uh, align around people who listen and and um, people who uh, are reflective, um, because they will be the people that are worth are, are, are worth investing your, your time in. And they'll be the people with with integrity, you know, the 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 the, the, the kind of loud characters that we, we all know that we've all met. They'll um, they'll ascend quickly, um, but they'll descend even more quickly. Yes. In my opinion. Okay. Another good bit of advice. Um, we're just past the halfway mark, so just um, if anyone's got any questions, pop them into the chat. If you want to ask Graham anything about anything that you said so far, or any other questions that you've got about career paths and, and building your own career, um, just thinking again about you know some of the work that you've done before graham um are there any sort of were there any sort of major crises or issues that you've had to deal with um in the past and and what, what were your key learnings from that perspective and, and how to how to keep calm i guess and manage those situations yeah um uh, crisis cr crises um have been a constant in my um Particularly my in-house career, um, really due to the emotive nature of the, you know, the, the work that we do. Um, we have a big interface with farmers. Um, farmers are really a very politically sensitive um, uh, group, um, and I, I mean, I think I think the 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 learnings from the learnings that I would I would suggest in terms of how to deal with crisis are not dissimilar to what we've just discussed, which is, you know, to be, to be reflective, not to be impulsive, um, and to build your relationships with the stakeholders who follow your, 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 your the topic or your business or whatever, whether they're media or political figures or the various audiences, audience groups, to build your relationship with with them based on integrity and being and and, and being straightforward and investing inv investing your time in doing that with them means that during a crisis um, the hysteria will quickly die away and you'll be able to have sensible discussions and and conversations and people will say look off the record what is going on here you know is this something to worry and you can give them a straight answer and you can you if you have that kind of trading relationship you can you can uh, uh, be confident that that kind of stuff uh, you know the important stuff um doesn't appear on the front page of the the mail or the sun or w whatever you know it is about it uh, what we do um as individuals and as an industry is we build relationships and uh, you just need to have a values-based approach to doing that, uh, and 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 it gets you a long way. Um, conversely, if you don't do that, uh, you, you you know you can very quickly find yourself self in 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 trouble. That's not to say it, it never goes wrong, but um, most of the time that's that's how I handle um, uh, crisis. Um, Oh, I mean, I could go through a list of crises, but I think people bore people to death, to be honest. And it, you know, they would be the same as everybody else has to has to face the same characteristics. So basically, uncontrolled events. Um, you know, whether they are to do with, uh, I don't know, uh, fires, um, uh, activist groups, um, uh, accidents. Um, you know. I suppose the other the other thing there is not to become too emotionally involved in in, in these situations, which is sometimes hard, you know, yeah. particularly particularly during COVID, where in our business, you know, we had we had um, uh, like like most businesses, we had deaths uh, to deal with. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to go back to a point that I sort of touched on earlier, um, and that's your, your career. You've worked in both agency and in-house, and I expect we've got people um, who've joined us today who are either one of the other and perhaps some people that have maybe only been in-house or perhaps have only been in agency. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> from your perspective, Graham, what's, what, what do you see as the key differences and maybe the sort of key benefits career-wise 
mm -hmm. um, to each of those areas and you know from your perspective you know do, do you have a, a personal favorite in terms of what you've learned and the type of work that you do mm -hmm. um uh, yes I, I i do um and uh i i suppose i i still consider myself to be very much a, a consultancy person um uh even though even though i've been in house for quite a long time now um i think consultancy particularly in the first decade or a couple of decades of, of, of our careers, fantastically enriching experience. Um, just the variety of situations that you can find yourself in, uh, it's preparation for, um, or it's, the, 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 uh, the diversity of, 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 of um, challenge that you're going to experience, um, the, the need to uh, consider your client work, but also to play your part in building and maintaining the agency. Um, the buzz you get from working within a team um, is fantastic. And uh, uh, I suppose I've been very fortunate in um, then working for an in-house um, business with, a, with a, good, a good team, a good sized team, because a lot of the consultancy mindset um you know i've been able to to redeploy within within an in-house situation and you know i would like to think that if i would like to think that a lot a lot of the um, uh, um culture and the mindset that we have here is is, is pretty much um identical people still have the, the pride and the buzz that comes with doing something well and i love to see that and you know i love to see people congratulating each other and recognizing each other's good work and good work being circulated around so that people can see it and uh, um you know to have that kind of positivity um uh, whatever the working environment I, I, is is really important um hopefully that can answers the answers the question I'm not sure if the, the lines of delineation are as big as people think, um, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, you didn't state a preference, but I don't know if you're just being diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I suppose my, my preference would be to work in a team uh, situation. I remember the initial days of working in-house as comms director of Wiseman. I was sitting in an office on my own, um, and it was a closed-door office. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't like that very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with your point about you know the, the you know the great learning opportunity that the agency gives. I started an agency as well, and I've worked in house as well. But I think just the volume and the variety of work that you get when you're in an agency environment is just is so invaluable to to learning, particularly in an early early part of your career. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the team part of it as well, regardless of whether you're in consultancy or in-house is, is a huge part of um of the comms of the yeah. comms job. Yeah. Um okay, thank you. Um just going back to again another point that you'd mentioned sort of early on when we first started was it was around um the importance of having a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to that just to I guess because you sort of mentioned you talked about the importance of having a mentor and, and encouraging people that are with us today to, to mm -hmm. find a mentor. Yeah. Can you maybe give us a bit more around, you know, any advice that you've got around what, how do you pick a mentor? Does it have to be someone that you work beside or, you know, does it have to be someone that is in the comms and PR industry or could it be someone that's got slightly different business experience? What, what would you say, you know, what, what's the criteria for finding a good mentor? Yeah, um, I, 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 I wouldn't overcomplicate it because there are impressive people all around um, and um, it doesn't even need to be somebody that works in the comms sector. You know, it could be it could be somebody that, uh, well, in my case, it was somebody that had um, worked in journalism initially, obviously, as I mentioned, but but then, then latterly um, uh, in consultancy, I suppose I suppose the the a good test would be you know would you talk about this person in the pub? You know, if somebody asked. Somebody asked, what is it you're doing at work now? Um, and 
you know, if you find yourself telling a story about somebody that you've met that really impressed you, that's probably a good starting point. So in consultancy, uh, for example, I was given the opportunity in Aberdeen in the early days to work for Bond Helicopters. So Bond Helicopters uh, does what it says in the tin. I think they were the biggest helicopter provider for the North Sea, for the oil platforms in the North Sea. And I met Stephen Bond, uh, who's the MD um, of, of um, Bond Helicopters. And he just really impressed me, you know, with his um, attitude to risk. You know, he thought, I'd quite like to do a, I'd like to start a helicopter company. I'm going to get some money from 3i and buy a helicopter. And that's literally how he started. And he built the biggest helicopter fleet in, in, in the North Sea. And he had just a really, really refreshing um, attitude to building a, a, a business. Uh, very open, very um, o o open with it, very, in some ways, quite naive, um, um, but just questioning, well, why can't I do this? Or, you know, what, what would be the reason that uh, I wouldn't do this? Uh, and I just found that really, really refreshing. So I asked, I asked to uh, uh, just get some time with them. And uh, um, every, oh, this was what I learned over the years. Everybody loves talking about themselves, you know. Um, it's the why are you so great question, you know. People go on about that for, as I'm doing now. People talk for hours um, in, in that respect. And, he, you know, I think entrepreneurs are no different, you know. I did that also with, uh, when I was in Aberdeen, with, um, what's it called, what, Muir Lockhart? Yeah, the, 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 the guy, Moyer Lockhead, who's the guy who uh, was... Chairman, Chief Executive of First Group uh, up there. I think he's retired now. But I didn't know him at all. But I sent him a letter um, saying, I sent him a letter saying um, that I was just uh, really interested to find out more about. And I, I got to go and meet him. And uh, you know, um, we ended up working for First that way. So just be, just be, just be daft and, and give it a go. And um, See, see what happens. Um, my most important mentor was Robert Wiseman, and um, without any shadow of a doubt, uh, um, Robert Wiseman uh, built the, 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 the Robert Wiseman dairies business um, from, and I'm, sit, I'm sitting in the original farmhouse right now, um, which is uh, where I'm still um, based, uh, of, of the Wiseman business. And he, he, he just had an amazingly focused and disciplined approach to building um, this business and a uh, complete disregard for the, for, for the rules. He was a, a real disruptor. And I remember when he asked me to come in as comms director, him saying, look, I need to let you know now, five years time, I'm going to sell this business. So that's a risk for you because I don't know who's going to buy it. But it's also an opportunity as well. But I just need you to know that. And he did. He sold it uh, in, in, in five years. He left the business having sold it for around 300 million pounds. Um, and um, to this day, you know, he's still important to me. Yeah, impressive. I mean, I think um, I would say that most people would be flattered to be approached. Yeah. Um, to, to take that sort of mentor role so um, you know and it sounds like you've just sort of fairly you know through your career on some occasions randomly reached out to people and they've always yeah. been very receptive so yeah. as you say you know just be brave and, and ask the question what's what's the worst that can happen Absolutely. Um, and just on that note I'll just say Wilma has posted in the chat about mentor if anyone's looking for a mentor or wants to be a mentor there is a service that we offer via PRCA to do a bit of matchmaking, I guess, on that on that front. Um, we're sort of coming towards the end. We've got about 10 minutes or so left, Graham. Um, looking back over your 30 years, mm -hmm. um, knowing what you know now with the benefit of, you know, 30 plus years of, of hindsight, what would you tell your younger self going into work in the Aberdeen Council? Uh... <laughs> Oh, I, I mean, I suppose um, what I would tell myself is to um, just don't don't be 
don't don't be uh, uh, intimidated by any situation that 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 you're in. Um, uh, show that you're interested by putting your own time in. Um, I suppose the coffee company example is is, is a good one, and you can set yourself apart by doing that. You know, um, I don't see many. I don't see enough people doing that. You know, putting their own time in, showing that they're that they're they're interested. Um, and you know, my my kids my kids now do this too, and uh, um, not because not because I told them to do it, but they seem to have worked that out um, uh, themselves. Um, steer clear of flash gets. Um, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier. The loudest person in the room, they're often the empty vessels and they get found out. Um, work hard to understand the paradigms. And um, this is the kind of human behavior element. So ask yourself when you're in a situation as a comms professional, why are these people or is this group behaving the way that it is? Really, really work hard to understand that because if you can understand what is driving them, it, it helps you anticipate and come up with the, 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 the solutions. I think the last thing that I would tell myself if I was young is, and this definitely didn't happen for me until um, really quite recently, is find a counterbalance in your life that's not work. You know, um, something that works for you. Get time to yourself. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, there'll be colleagues on this call that I've, I've had that conversation with who are important to me. Um, it is really, really important to, to, to do that because I, I, I don't know what it is about comms professionals in particular. The, uh, maybe it's to do with the way the news cycle works, but it's hard to switch off sometimes. So take that time, find something that works for you something that's intellectually or, or or physically engaging that that gets you in a position where you even if it's half an hour you haven't thought about your work i just think that's that that that, that that's really important and i did see in my consultancy career i saw people burning out um, a lot and um the and that was unnecessary you know. Yeah, it takes a lot of discipline, though, that that type of thing, you know, I, I think you're right, you know, it's, I think it's part of the, the news cycle. And I think, you know, maybe particularly an agency and possibly with some types of in house roles, depending on the nature of the organisation, there is that sort of always on yeah. type approach. And I, and I think that, the, you know, being disciplined about your own time does yeah. take a fair bit of control. Yeah. Um, to make sure that you do apply those things. Yeah, um, but, but you know, I, I, if uh, on a practical level, uh, for me, it's going for a run. So if, if I go for a run, I'll leave my I leave my phone in the house or in the car. Never take my phone with me going for a run. Um, and it doesn't matter if the run is twenty minutes or half an hour or an hour. Nothing is going to break in that uh, hour. And if, if people want to call and leave a message, you'll be able to get back to them within that hour. But I can't stress enough the importance of giving yourself that, that downtime. And you know it, that doesn't necessarily mean time with your family uh, or with kids or with dogs or whatever. Uh, actual time on your own is a very healthy thing. Yeah, good. Okay, so I guess they were tips for your younger self, um, and I, you know they can apply to people that we've got with us today. But are there any other sort of top tips that you would give to people um, that are either? I mean, I was going to say people starting out in their career, but I guess even people that maybe have sort of 10, 15 years experience and maybe getting to that point where they're thinking, oh, well, what's the next challenge? How do I, how do I get from being you know the sort of midpoint to being a, a more senior practitioner? Yeah. Um, well, I, 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 I suppose uh, many people in this call will be aware of this, but you know, this is a this is a unique time for comms professionals, in the sense that you know you, you, there are lots of opportunities now. Um, if you if you if you're lucky enough to operate in a good team, um, there's nothing stopping you saying. 
uh, putting your hand up to say, I want to try this. I want to do something different. Um, you know, uh, people in my team quite often have come to me over the years to say, I, I want to discuss how I can develop within this team. And um, what, what, what we do is we work on a development plan, say, right, if this is what you want to do, do this and do this and do this, and then you can do that. And it's almost like a contract. So, you know, you can, you can do that within your existing team or your existing, your existing business. If you can't do that, then my advice is to leave. And, 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 and to go and, go and do it somewhere else. Um, um, nobody's going to, nobody's going to uh, hand progress to you on a plate. Um, you can make your own luck by, by, by working, working for it, working hard. Um, maybe if I could be so bold, just doing some of the things that we've discussed here, you know, um, picking out businesses or individuals that you admire. Um, and and uh, um, and being bold enough to say, you know, what what would it take for me to work for you, yeah. and work with you? Great. Thanks very much, Graham. Some good insight and bits of advice. Um, is there anything else that you want to mention that we haven't already touched on or covered? Uh, well, I mean, I suppose. I suppose just my final point would be that in the time, all the time I've been doing this, everything changes, but everything stays the same. By that, what I mean is the kit all changes, you know, the channels that we work in change and the technology that we use changes, but really everything stays the same. Um, the important things don't change at all. And the most important of the important things is your personal values, you know, what you stand for. And um, you, you, you know, I think it's very important to define what that is and to stick to it. Um, for me, it's it's integrity and, and uh, building trust. And uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter if the world is spinning around you at high speed. Um, you know, these these values should be at your core, and uh, that's that's the kind of last thing that I would I would offer. Great. Thank you very much, Graham. I found that um, really interesting. Hopefully others who are with us today have picked up um, a little bit of advice that they can take forward. If you have enjoyed this today, um, and we're just getting a comment in from some people saying they've thoroughly enjoyed it, so thanks for that. Um, if you have enjoyed it, we are planning to do this on a monthly basis, um, so we will have other PR industry veterans joining us. So keep an eye out on the PRC website for the dates and times of those events. Um, this event is being has been recorded as well. So I believe um, it will be available subsequently. Wilma can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but um, you, you share it with your friends and your colleagues in the industry as well. And um, I'll just say thank you again to Graham for your time today. Um, and thank you to everyone who's joined us. And uh, that's us just wrapped up a few minutes early. Okay. And thank you, everybody. Thanks, thank everyone. Thank you all. Bye.